The last round of la la last round of la la last round of Welcome to the last roundup horror show. I am Frank. It's Jason. Uh, we're doing it uh, solo bolo style this time. It's laid back. Laid back. This is a chill episode. <laughs> not a lot of rigmarole and people not watching movies. Um, <clears throat> Digging at your pockets and yeah, putting clips on you. Yeah, exactly, Jared. Original play stuff. Get over you for reading. <clears throat> yeah. He, he preaches reading, but when you go to read, God, I just keep talking. I do work for this show. You just keep talking and saying so. You keep reading. <laughs> uh, we, we're splitting up the picks this time. Uh, so this is J uh, Jason as Jason's episode. Uh, we're going to start it out with funny games. Not fun in games. Funny games from 1997. Uh, I did a little fun thing with these reviews. I I went through the all the other names that they're known by. Uh, I translated them. Oh, uh, well, so, you should have translated the tagline because I didn't get. Oh, really? Because the tagline was it went German, uh, Dutch. It's uh, I don't know if I wrote it down. German, I think. Yeah, I think it's German. It's German. Um, also known as Funny Games is also known as Hours of Terror. Free violence, strange toys, dangerous play, and deadly games. So, maybe you're in Brazil. Maybe you're in some other country. Hmm. That might be what you know it by. I wonder what the tagline <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah, you should, you should have hit me up. I could have. Or just you Google Translate. I use it all the time. Too lazy. <laughs> uh, summary for this film: Two violent young men take a mother, father, and son hostage in their vacation cabin and force them to play sadistic games with one another for their own amusement. Written and directed by Michael Haneke. I Again, I think it's German, so it's probably not Haneke. <laughs> yeah, Haneke? I don't know. <laughs> what, what, do you have additional details on this? Uh, distributed by Concord Castle and uh, I don't, uh, Blu ray uh, Criterion Collection this year, 2019. Right. I bought that copy. It's it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, but I just want to say, <laughs> we talked about it earlier yeah. too. Like, I thought I was getting uh, <laughs> trolled or something, but oh, the, this blue ray, yeah. that intro music comes in. Yeah. Like, I had to go to YouTube and reference a couple <laughs> videos because it just seemed like it. Yeah, well, what happens is, like, there's, uh, what is it, like, classical music? They're, li or they're talking about classical music. And then this screeching, screaming music. And I've heard people call it metal. It's more like, like grindcore like almost. Those, it's noise it music. It's, it's not. It's awful. But they do it at the end of it, too. Um, uh, yeah, that's the first thing I wrote. What a crazy fucking soundtrack transition during the opening credits. Uh, it also happens. I would have done something else. But, yeah. yeah, a little song. It's a, overall, with the classical music. Overall, it's a pretty classy horror movie. I mean, it's like an artistic horror movie. Uh, I wouldn't. I I did, I did not enjoy this film. <laughs> um, it's not what I want in a Here movie. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this to anyone, really. Uh, I in, unless you like. I guess if you, you like this style movie, you know most people like different movies than you. So this right. should be one. If this you don't one like was it, just not an enjoyable experience. But overall. you recognize that it was done well. Yeah. It shot well. Yeah. You. you uh, I, I just like to have a little bit of fun with a motion picture, <laughs> and this was not There's fun. Nothing at all. fun about it. Uh, it was ex the exact opposite of what I want. Uh, I would never, I would never say this. It made you feel too many feelings. No, I would never say this. Uh, yes, could could you give me a movie with zero hope, uh, where I essentially watch a perfectly pedestrian family get pointlessly murdered without any repercussions? Games for they the two. Games. Two rather boring antagonists. I think that the killers in this are pretty boring overall. Uh, and 
and make me like make it this thing that I don't want, and then make me have to read it. That's just like that's two things that I don't want to do. You could have chose. I couldn't. There has to be a. I I found. I was now I was going to these sites that were like you know putt lockers trying to find a copy of this to watch. Because when I said funny games, did you think I, it was two thousand seven? No. Have you seen this before? I've seen the artwork for it, or the cover, the poster, whatever. Have you seen 2007? No. And I won't. <laughs> Unless we watch it no, there's not, for the show. No, it's pretty close to, like, scene for scene, same right. director. Yeah. Um, I tried to find a You're wrong, redeem- but go ahead. I, f- I tried to find a redeeming quality for this movie just to say something positive. And I'm like... I g- it was filmed... Proficiently, it was it was filmed in Absolutely. a cool way. Uh, it was artistically shot, but it was complete dread for me throughout the whole thing, and uh, I didn't enjoy that. I guess you could say you would have liked uh, it if it was. Here's cold. another positive. Dreadful. This you could say this is the first type of this sort of suspense movie, because um, home invasion. Yeah, it, it it and this is this is exactly the kind of reason why I like that sequel to The Strangers more than the original, because the original has that same sort of feeling as this movie, I think. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Uh, I don't, I can only give this... Uh, I'm going to give it a 2 out of 10. Now, Jason probably... I can see how Jason probably likes this a lot. I would say he's probably in the 8 range. I think most but, people like this movie. Right. Um, yeah, so I, I have it as Home Invasion at its best. Um, we talked about the crazy music. Um, it's just really intense, heavy scenes. I mean, that kid gets his head splattered. Yes. Spider. Uh, yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> the kid, number one, a kid death. Right there, you're already. Yeah. I don't around. like it. I don't yeah. like it. Not a lot of people don't. I understand. But he gets his head splattered. Right. But that whole scene, like, was so freaking heavy it was and i swear to god if I, I i think it's all one long shot there's no cuts there's no edits yeah she just has to she has to sit there and just like think, face and think about what just happened and i thought the funny thing is that she like all she needed all she wanted at that point was just to shut off that race on tv oh yeah like I don't know. That would have been... <laughs> it's just the little things about like yeah. that in this movie that just makes it seem so real and it, it just crazy. Uh, but that's what it is. So I don't, I don't know what kind of movies you like. Right. This movie is just... It's all feelings. It's it makes all, you feel like you're watching one of you those hate the, real... villains. They you, turn them into villains. It, 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 this is how... I'm going to say, I don't like it. That's why I gave it a low score. It is done well enough to where it will make you feel like the same feeling you get when you watch one of those real life crime murder documentaries or whatever. The first forty eight. Yeah, shit like that. Like <laughs> you were like, oh my god, that's a real person. Just it, it 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 makes you feel that same. It mimics that feeling. So I don't know. Um, Quality. Yeah, but I, there's a lot of long shots and with very few cuts. Um, it breaks the fourth wall. Yeah, that, that throws me off always because, <laughs> like, it, that seems like it's reserved for like comedy kind yeah, of things. Like this yeah. ain't a com- this ain't a comedy. <laughs> no. This ain't funny. Um, but it's foreign, so that makes this. So then, like, like, he talks to the camera. He rewinds, picks up and rewinds the movie. Yeah, uh, that I like it and I don't like it, but that, that's just nitpicking for me. Um, the look and condition of the family gets progressively worse through the movie. I think that you have to say they're great actors. I mean, I, I also was, you know, makeup and special effects and, or, you know, makeup effects that helps, but that acting is good. Um, I as think far as you can tell, because I always have a hard time with foreign act acting. I don't know if it's feeling, good or not. They could, they, they could you have know? said like, two words this whole movie and just the seeds the situations that's what that's what makes this movie intense uh beautifully shot uh such a raw raw feeling to it it just i guess that's maybe what you mean when it seems like i'm watching a documentary or something like i'm watching yeah this is real life stuff like 
I don't know. I was sucked in the movie, and I think that's all you. That's all you want, as it's, far as a director and. Yeah, well, it's reason. It, like everything that happens is pretty reasonable to be some. Like it could be something that happens. <laughs> there's, there's psychos, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I gave it an eight. Yeah, I see, I hit it right on the head. I knew right what, what he was gonna say. About I recommend. It. It. Um, let's move into your next film, uh, Scared Stiff from 1987, also known as Abraxas. The Masterson Curse, The Talisman of Terror, Macabre Nightmare, The Voodoo Curse, and The Stone Talisman. <laughs> I like that shit. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, summary for this film. Strange visions come to haunt a singer when she, her son, and her psychiatrist turned boyfriend move into an old colonial house that is haunted by the ghost of a ruthless slave owner. Directed by Richard Friedman, who... Uh, did, worked on Tales from the Dark Side, Friday the 13th, the series, and Monsters. So, and Doom Asylum. Yeah. Uh, written by Mark Frost, uh, who, who worked on Hill Street Blues, Twin Peaks, and Fantastic Four. Uh, with David F. Bachner and Richard Friedman. What do you uh, have? Tagline, there's no place left to hide, distributed in public pictures. Out on Arrow Video this year, I picked this one up too. It's, it looks good. It sounds good. It's beautiful. Uh, yeah, I saw that. It does look cool. They put it, everything they put out is good. I yeah. Think. Uh, <laughs> I, I I don't know. I don't know how many times I just we're, we're fortunate to have these small yeah horror companies putting out these movies again. I I I never seen this back in the day. No. Now I'm getting I'm getting a chance to watch it for the first time. With a 2K scan. Yeah. Props uh, to Arrow and others. <laughs> so the, there's a lot of funny things about this movie. Uh, there's a psych the psychologist guy, the boyfriend character. Does he work at the mental hospital from uh, <laughs> fucking one flew over the cuckoo's nest? Because he goes into work like the thing that bothers me is that she used to be his patient, right? But all his patients that are in his waiting room are fucking bonkers, like crazy characters, like that you would see in a comedy. Um, <laughs> the the female lead is a pop singer, uh, f or f she has some sort of trauma. I don't know if they ever deal with it. Is it the guy tried to slit her through? Is that what happened? I I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff I didn't understand. Well. Um, <sighs> Let's just address it right now. <laughs> the first hour of this movie, not a lot is happening. No. Not a lot of it is even making a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, but it's stuff like that. I'll let that stuff slip, right. slide, because it's an eight, it's an eight, cheesy 80s movie. So. Right. Uh, it makes it bearable to get through. <laughs> the I thought the soundtrack was pretty dull, except for... The piano piece that they find uh, in the attic, where she starts playing it, that like the th overall theme of the movie is fucking great. Like it's probably one of my favorite pieces of music I've heard in a movie. Uh, the kid in this movie has one of the ugliest fucking lamps um, that I've ever seen in my life. You remember that? Yeah, and I, I think I swear I've seen one of those in real life, like in person. It's the sort of thing I would buy I if feel I like saw some it. Some friend had it in their bedroom when I. <laughs> If I saw that, I would buy it, and just to, to see. Yeah, he names it Cochise, Cochise, and they put some sort of importance on it, but it really doesn't do anything. That never pays off. But the thing—that's the sort of thing I would buy just to see the look in my wife's face when I brought it home. Like, eh, for the living room. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's just ugly as fuck. Um, there's a cop character in here that I love. He's just a good shitty cop. Uh, he's in there they're pulling corpses out of the damn attic and he's got to have the, what is it a race he's watching or something or is he watching football I can't remember uh, but that's kind of a running thing like he's always got to watch TV he's even got one in this filing cabinet at one point looks like he's uh, looks like he's working <laughs> I just love a good shitty cop uh, there's a laugh out loud point in this movie where the boy's playing uh, a game on this uh, Apple IIe computer uh, in a Apple vector <laughs> a vector image. Was it Apple II? I didn't. I, didn't I, I don't know. That. It might have been a Commodore 64. Who knows? I don't know. But this vector image comes out uh, of the talisman. <laughs> it's like rotating around and spinning. Uh, it comes right on the screen and it blows these people's mind. And I just fucking laughed out loud. 
It was it, how'd that look in like a nice age crisp HD? It looks good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. This isn't really what you would call a traditional uh, good horror movie, but you can have fun with it if you are in the right mood. Um, uh, one of my favorite things about the film is the shitty detective who dies when his car flips upside down and then blows up. <laughs> like, that's the kind of shit that's happening. Um, uh, and the characters in the mental hospital are always funny when he has to walk through there. Uh, there's one guy in a leather bomber jacket with no shirt underneath, and he keeps scratching his chest and shit. Uh, uh, little things like that make this movie really enjoyable. Um, I'm not exactly sure what uh, is supposed to be happening with the psychologist turning into a demon like version of an old slave master uh, I guess you're just supposed it's a, to it's, a, it's, a, it's it, cursed it's yeah. the Masterson curse. you're supposed to just accept it as ghost shit <laughs> uh, <laughs> the ending of the movie is like a mashup of house on I think happens in a curse <laughs> uh, the end of the movie is like a, ma a mashup of house uh, and uh, the hell sequences from Bill and Ted's bogus journey I thought uh, if if the whole movie was the like the ending, I, I would be fucking bonanza of fun. Uh, I would have given this a fairly high score if that if it was more of that, but I I can only give it like a four. That's uh, where I'm sitting with it. I agree with a, a lot of what you say. I guess I, I enjoyed it more. You know what though? So, one more thing. The, I forgot to write this down. <laughs> they start the movie off with some of the most racist shit. <laughs> They're selling black people. <laughs> I got two good Negroes right here. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it starts, yeah, because it starts off yeah. back in the day. Like right. It starts at an earlier time period. Uh, yeah, so it's like a supernatural creature feature, kind of, because they got that crazy, the, 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 you see that there's a creature, there's a whatever it is, a demon. You, you get to see it in all of its glory at the end. Um, it has voodoo curses, it, uh, it touches on some psychological elements. Where this movie shines is the creatures, um, and the, the practical effects. Um, and it's all kind of like over the top makeup, like, just, I can't, but like, Demon Wind, they had the crazy look of like monsters. And, yeah, it did have a similar feel to yeah, that movie. Um, but the problem is, there's not a lot of that. Uh, the first hour, it's pretty. It's pretty slow, um, but like I said earlier, it's an '80s movie. It's a cheesy '80s movie, so I can, I can look past that. I, I let that stuff slide. Uh, I found it an easy watch, even though it didn't really pick up to the final act. Uh, the, the story was okay. The music is good. The acting's okay. Um, I just wish there would have been. I wish it would have been more eventful. Um, there's not a lot of kills. I don't think it's anything you necessarily have to see. So it comes in right just uh, right under the recommended eight. I give it a seven. Yeah, I mean, I think I would. I, I can't I, say I, I. I can't say I. Don't I, recommend it. I, I gave it a four, but it's the kind of four that you could rewatch again. <laughs> I mean, that's the best way. It's. It, I think you could probably watch it with the kids. Maybe I don't know. That racist stuff is a little bit racist. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, up next, uh, the House on Sorority Row. Sorority Row. Nineteen eighty-three. I find sorority a hard word oh, yeah. to spell. It never looks right to me. Yeah. I oh, for to, real. I have to pause. There's a lot of O's and I's in there. I always <laughs> think I have too many I guess R's. There's one I. It seems like I'm just writing R's. Yeah. Right uh, also known as House of Evil, Murders in the Secret fr Fraternity, <laughs> Seven Sinful Sisters, Murders in the Girl's House, Do Not Enter That College, Omen, Seven Sisters, House of Fear, Mrs. Slater's House, The House on, in the the House in the Corner of Sorority, Nursing Home, On the Greek Street, or Seven Trapped Women, or Seven Women Trapped, I guess. It's a lot of names. Uh, summary, Let's for this, continue. <laughs> summary for this film. I'll try to cut them short in, in the future. Uh, after a seemingly innocent prank goes horribly wrong, a group of sorority sisters are stalked and murdered one by one in their sorority house <laughs> while throwing a party to celebrate their graduation. I love fucking saying that word so many times. 
Directed by Mark Rossman, written by Mark Rossman and Bobby Fine. Music by Richard Band. Huh? What do you have? I like him. I like him. He does like good work, I'll be He's honest. He's got a lot of stuff, too. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, and according to IMDb, this, this Mark Rossman is his debut film. Yeah. I mean, that's... Yeah. Oh, yeah, for with, sure. Starting off with a banger there. Tagline, when the nightmare ends, the terror begins. Distributed by Artists Releasing and Film Ventures uh, on Blu-ray. It's a couple of different... Variations. Uh, gosh, I can't think of <laughs> Cut it away. Move on. These companies. <laughs> you know how it is. These movie producing yeah, companies. Hollywood. Uh, Big I Hollywood. Have, I have the Blu ray on Shock, uh, released in 2016. Um, yeah, the, uh, fun fun fact here. Uh, Mrs. Slater, the. What, do you, what would you call her? She's the sorority mother or house attendant yeah what? house mother I yeah think that's what um, all of her lines were adr with a different actress doing them uh evidently rossman said that she had the right look but her voice was all wrong and he needed something deeper uh I can't stand your voice <laughs> can you imagine saying you look to good, somebody i can't stand your voice yeah you, it just doesn't work uh uh, is it just me or does it bother you when you see people pouring alcohol the way they do in these movies? Or is it just like, ah, oh, you want some there? Vodka everywhere, all over the place. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, the, the girl with the uh, weird boobs has a waterbed in her dorm room. The weird boobs? Yeah, she has some really weird ones. They're like fake, early fake, um... Wonkers. I don't know. They're, they're crazy. They're crawling. I can't believe I don't have <laughs> notes on that. Uh, she has. A, she has. The, she's the one that they're in the waterbed, and she comes in and stabs the waterbed. Yeah. That no one would have a waterbed in a dorm room. That's absolutely insane. <laughs> uh, the soundtrack is both good and bad at points. Uh, the band that plays the party is fucking garbage. Uh, they are an actual band called Four Out of Five Doctors. And they contribute too many songs. Uh, when it's the Richard Band score, it's really, really good. But more often than not, it's four out of five doctors sounding like the opening act for whatever that asshole. I like the band. You, they said this is what I was thinking the whole time. This band opened up for that shitty band from uh, what was the movie? Night Train to Terror. <laughs> Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this yeah. band opened for that band. <laughs> I like this band better. Uh, and if you want to hear more from uh, Four Out of Five Doctors, they're on YouTube. You can check out all their music. So uh, that was original music? Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. I, uh, I liked it. <laughs> I thought it was perfect. I mean, for what? Uh, it's 1983. I can't stand it. Now, now, now this on. is the first of two movies that you picked that had, like, college parties with bands playing in them yeah i'll talk more about that on our next review <laughs> because i've enjoyed that band but um the death scenes are really well put together um and shot creatively for not really showing you anything i think uh you rarely see anything on the screen there's nothing likable about any of these women you keep waiting for them to die so it's one of those kind of movies uh the, I, end, I ended up enjoying the third act of this movie way more than I thought I would based on my dislike of these characters and that terrible fucking band. Uh, I think the last 30 minutes of this film are so enjoyable that it pushes the rating from a 4 to a 6 out of 10 uh, for me. Yeah. That's See, what I'm this saying. is why we need like a third person. Because Middle ground? Funny game should have been approved. This one should be approved. <laughs> and there's no way Do you think can. Jared would have liked Funny Games? I don't know. I don't think it hurts anything. You can give it your personal approval. How about that? No one cares about the personal approval. We have we don't have enough numbers to I do it. I don't have a stake for the personal approval. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some eggs. 1983, <laughs> 80 slasher. Uh, 
and this has a great poster too. I love the poster. Um, set the sorority house. It's a good setting for a slasher. Several of them out there. And, uh, it's not like spooky atmosphere, but this has a great atmosphere to me. Like again, it's part of just liking the setting. I think. Mm. I just I don't know. I, I I thought the atmosphere was great in this. Um, it's nothing groundbreaking. You know what you're gonna get. I think the characters were okay, likable. I thought great final girl and a great final girl. Scene. I ended up liking her a lot more at the end. Towards she, the end. Well, no, she ended up she wants she's on like soap operas and stuff. And yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway. Great! I like the final girl. I like the final girl scene. Um, the rest of them just didn't matter, and it's not that the characters weren't. The acting's not very good. Outside of that one, outside the final girl, the rest of them's acting. Um, I, I like I like the band. I like <laughs> I like the the other music throughout it. I like the story, the kills. It has a decent body count. Um, well, it's Richard ba Richard Band. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's done so much stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's the, and he reuses this stuff all the time. Well, I know so. you said that. I mean, I don't know. He just has so much stuff. I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah. Why not? Um, and the the killer switches clothes, switches masks, and where he wears a couple of different masks. And, well, well, whoever the killer is. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, we didn't even mention him at all. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. That was different. It was I a liked, twist. It was a good I liked twist. that. Yeah. I think I, I think I, caught on to it pretty, pretty early too. Uh, but anyway, uh, I think if you're a fan of slashers, especially a fan of any slashers, I, I, I recommend this. Um, I give this an eight. All right, well, let's get uh, let's get another fucking. It should column. be it should be approved. Jason approves it. Uh, <laughs> um, the Prowler, 1981, uh, also known as Rosemary's Killer, Who Killed Rosemary, The Murder of Rosemary, Pitchfork Massacre, Most Likely to Die, and Forehead of Death for some reason. Uh, summary: An unknown killer clad in World War II U.S. Army fatigues stalks a small New Jersey town bent on reliving a 35-year-old double murder by focusing on a group of college kids holding an annual spring dance. Directed by Joseph Zito, who did Friday the 13th, The Final Chapter. How about uh, that, huh? And the, uh, then movies like Red Scorpion with Dolph Lundgren and oh. Missing in Action with Chuck Norris. So he's done some, uh, done some shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> written by six people, five of which are mainly cartoon writers with extensive IMDb pages. And one of the writers, Neil Barbera, is the son of Joseph Barbera of Hanna-Barbera fame. What do you have? Tagline, you don't need a chainsaw to have a massacre. Distributed by Sandhurst and out on Blu-ray through Blue Underground 2016. Uh, fun facts, Tom Savini considers this to be his best work. He also did all the Prowler's kills, uh, so anytime that there's a kill, it's Tom in the suit. Uh, the film, This film was the reason that director Joseph Zito got that final chapter job. Um, evidently they liked this so much that they're like, we need to snag that dude. Um, I wrote down all the kills for this one. Uh, uh oh, Jared. <laughs> what? We got a lot of reading. Oh uh, no, no, no! I just wanted to. There's. Uh, uh, I don't care. There. <laughs> <laughs> there's. Uh, there's eight kills. There's uh, the first kill. Uh, uh, pitchfork threw a couple. Which was pretty. It was. It would have just been a pretty. I mean, that's the highlight of this film, right? It's the pitchfork. It's the, the kill. Whenever he kicks You're the. You're touching on. When he kicks the, he kicks his boot into the into the pitchfork. It really drives it home. Uh, the knife through the top of the head kill is fucking fantastic. His eyes turn white. Uh, that's great. Yeah, uh, I, I was pretty. I don't know what I was watching. The making of or whatever they talk about. It's that the eyes suck him back in. It's, yeah. it's the suction. Yeah, <laughs> from the knife makes his eyes. Oh yeah, that's crazy. It yeah, was, it, like, was, like, it was pretty detail. disturbing, especially for 1981. Can you believe that? Uh, yeah, he's the man. Uh, 
there's a pitchfork through a girl's stomach in the shower, uh, slits a girl's throat in the pool with a knife, uh, stabs another woman in the throat with a knife. Uh, there's this, the least impressive one was this big idiot gets shot with a shotgun. And it was just, you know, standard. But the sheriff dies. Spoiler alert, he's the prowler. <laughs> and he dies uh, by a shotgun blast, and his head just pops. Uh, it's it's a great Savini yeah. kill. Uh, a pitchfork is a pretty weird weapon for a former soldier to use a lot, rely on. You think he. And he has. I guess he does end up using the gun uh, that he loads up at the beginning. Uh, do you think that somebody involved just had a really cool police badge collection and they're like, uh, hey guys, like, my friend's got this police badge collection. Can we hang it in the sheriff's station scene? Because otherwise they had to rent that. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> they're in the sheriff's. Well, it stood out to me. It was a big, giant display of just different police badges. <laughs> And I thought, and, uh, you know, I just thought in my head some garage guys like, came across some guys sale. like, my brother Kenny's got a fucking display case full of badges, man. He'd love to get in on this movie. Um, <laughs> it's obvious that somebody was really proud of that, proud of that fucking thing. But uh, <laughs> the band in this movie, there's a band in this movie, kind of a similar theme, uh, party at a, a college. Uh, this band is called Nowhere Fast. Uh, and they're much better than other band. You can find their self-titled release for $3.99 if you dig these funky fresh sounds. This movie is basically uh, like quality wise right there with Friday the 13th and My Bloody Valentine. Um, they pull a lot from those two I think I don't know which came first uh, but there's kind of some similar like even was even Friday 80 yeah I think so but when was my bloody Valentine 81 same yeah. year as this because there's some well, si really similar years. things from that from I that one 81. I thought but uh, yeah it's I mean you got all the 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 tropes you'll find in this genre movies of that era like doors never want to open uh, like this one woman has so many tr troubles with doors. They're just always locked or something. And the They're, one's like a yeah, the one's like a front door. It's a screen door. You're Pull that like, son of a bitch yeah. off. Um, anyways, uh, that's what it, makes them good. I think that they. I think that they were. <laughs> Are you I, yelling at the screen? I think they. It's a screen door. <laughs> just open it. Come on, bitch! Open that door. Uh, no, there was a. Uh, there was also a time where when they're in the pool scene. I thought that the score kind of mimicked Jaws music a little bit, which was weird. Um, this is an excellent movie. Uh, if you like those movies we talked about, uh, check it out. Uh, it's an 8 out of 10 for me. So, If you were going to say you didn't like this movie, I was <laughs> kicking you out. Get out of here. The other ones, you're way low on Sorority Row, but... Uh, and this is a standalone slasher. Yeah. Like it's, it's a really good slasher that never had you know, sequels. It's Tom Savini at its best. Uh, you've touched on all the kills, great kills, and that's what drives this entire movie. It's not a character driven movie. Um, practical effects and gore spot on. Again, I like the setting. It's a, it's a college, it's a dance. I, I like it. Um, and another good pool scene. I don't know what, why I'm just picking up on these pool scenes. <laughs> it was weird that these become... two movies we watched at the same time because I was like, there's a lot of similar well, shit. Like, yeah, like, oh, I've been seeing a lot, like, seen a lot of pool scenes. I really, <laughs> like, it's starting to become a favorite. Summertime, get the pool movies going. It's like a, a genre of scenes. Um, Killer has a good look. Um, I think this is pretty much spot on with everything as far as slashers if you're a fan of slashers highly recommend i think it would even it'd be a nice double feature with my bloody valentine yeah definitely i give it a 10 there's an official approved yeah well um uh, that's this episode uh Join us next time for a bunch of movies that Jason does not like. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Thanks for listening, watching, uh, all that stuff. See you next time.